Now the next performance I'm really excited about. Why? Because this is not a vocal performance. This is a sitar performance. Let's see if whatever we've learned, we can apply to learnt in vocal. Can we apply it to sitar? The second reason why I'm really excited about the performance that we're going to listen to is because this is by a great, great, great sitarist known as Ustad Vilayat Khan. He's no more, but he was probably one of the greatest. Also, he was a contemporary of Pandit Ravi Shankar, who is more popularly known in the West. And Ustad Vilayat Khan had a great media rivalry with Pandit Ravi Shankar. And he, Ustad Vilayat Khan, famously turned down accolades bestowed upon him by the Indian government, saying that the jury or the, the judging panel, so to say, was not competent enough to give him an award. He was truly a superstar, had a bungalow in Shimla, used to drive around in luxury cars, used to smoke the choicest of cigars. But he reached that level through mad, mad amounts of riyas, and that shows in his playing. So let's see if we can apply our little techniques, the techniques that we've learned. Can we apply those little techniques to this great master's exposition of Rag Bhairavi? He's being accompanied on the tabla by another great, great, great tabla player known as Pandit Kishan Maharaj. Let's see if we can sort of gauge what he's playing. Now notice that, of course, the sitar playing won't have lyrics to it. But remember how the mukhda kept on coming back? First it was kanhare, and then in the next examples it was something else, right? The same thing kept on coming back, in the same tune, of course. In this case, the lyrics won't be coming back, but the same tune will be coming back. In this case, I'll identify the tune for you, which will serve as the mukhda. So in this case, it's... This is the tune, this is the mukhda, which will keep on coming back. Let's see if you can identify the mukhda. This performance per se does not have any fast dance. Ustadji Ustad Vilayat Khan does not even play the antara in this in this composition. He just expands and expands and expands for 17-18 minutes, just playing alabs, and then he finishes. Now sometimes uh, an artist can finish the song without playing the tihai. Let's see how he decides to finish this composition. ends here. So sometimes, very rarely, especially in instrumental music, an artist can decide to finish the, finish the song without playing the tihai. And tabla, the person on the tabla, has to be really sensitive to what the artist is doing and gauge if the tihai is coming or if the artist is deciding to finish without the tihai. And in this case, Pandit Kishan Maharaj just aced it. So that was a quick breakdown of the performances of three great artists, Pandit Jayatirth Mevundi, Pandit Venkatesh Kumar and Ustad Vilayat Khan of course, with Pandit Kishan Maharaj. We broke their performances down based on, our, on the little techniques that we learnt. And as I told you, the techniques that we learnt are applicable to every, almost every performance, every Indian classical performance that you'll ever come across. 
Also, I decided to add the sitar bit here because sometimes vocal music can become a bit too heavy, right? Sometimes the lyrics are not that audible, especially in classical music, and it, it becomes heavy. But on the other hand, instrumental music, especially sarod, sitar, flute, or even the violin, can tend to be a little light on the ear. So if you want, you can start exposing yourself to Indian classical by listening to sitar, by listening to sarod, by listening to flute, violin, all of these instruments, and then slowly move to vocal if you want to. Because the techniques that we have learned are also applicable to all of these instruments. Right? So with that, we come to the end of this episode. So I'll meet you in the next episode. Until then, namaste.